Hello and welcome to an episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode as Lamborghini coming into the Hungarian Grand Prix for the first time in this career mode, a track we've never really been that quick round but will that change on a new game as we come out of the plasma corner into the final corner in qualifying for our very first lap we've been wide on the exit, we come up to the line and it's an absolute stinker of the lap then as we skip on to the end of qualifying now our very final run as you can see we've gained over a second as we come into the final sector and somehow I don't know how we found that time anyway into the penultimate corner round the final corner now and up to the line we haven't run wide and it's going to be pole position then for the Grand Prix, let's go to the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's race day in Budapest as we get ready for another round of Formula One action. It's tight, it's technical. Some drivers love it, some drivers find it a challenge. Either way, there's been so much drama in the last couple of years at the Hungarian Grand Prix. We're in the northeast of Budapest for the race today then at the 2.7 mile Hungara Ring Circuit. 14 corners here, 8 to the right and 6 to the left on a track where downforce is king and passing is notoriously difficult. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Brown lines up on pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid we have... Sonoda, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Norris, Verstappen, Stroll, Russell, Oscar Piastri, Bottas, Albon, Joe, Gasly, Magnussen, Fittipaldi, Liam Lawson, Ocon, De Vries, Sargent, and Lewis Hamilton rounds off the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. With me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. Joined once again by Anthony Davidson for this one. Ant, there's a lot of incidents on track recently for this driver. No one does that on purpose. It is part and parcel of racing, though. It's not an ideal situation by any means. When you get into a bad run like that, there's always the risk of frustration creeping in, which can cause more mistakes and locks you into this vicious cycle. Hopefully today they can get through turn one cleanly and stay calm for the rest of the race. So we're here on the grid then, and it's going to be a fairly easy one stop, just like it is in every race this season. It seems to be started on the softs, going to the mediums, but there is a two stop there, so we'll see who decides to do that. Our championship rival in George Russell starts all the way down in P10, so we can gain more points on our fellow Brit in the championship, possibly. As the Viper Knights go out for the Hungarian Grand Prix and we've had a bit of a stinker of a start. We've had quite a lot of wheel spin as Sonoda and Alonso go wheel to wheel into the first corner now. We lead and we light up the rear tyres coming out to the first corner. And now we've lost so much time. We've lost out to Alonso, we've lost out to our teammate Yuki and we may lose out to the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc as well. We keep our foot in at the inside of turn three, we give him a little nudge, and we do just about stay in third place. They're ahead of the two Ferraris who are now going wheel to wheel. Leclerc though stays ahead. So then, as we go into the first corner, this is a replay, and you can see we've just lit up the rear tires like a firework, and we've lost out multiple positions there but anyway skipping on to the end of lap one and we always really struggle through the middle sector and we've maybe nearly lost out to Charles Leclerc here but into turn into that corner we keep it pinned round the outside we do put him on the curb a little bit but we do ultimately stay ahead as now at the inside goes Leclerc into turn one we're looking to do the switch back this time we don't go sideways out to the first corner as we head down towards turn two, we're looking to cut the inside, but we're too far back to get past Leclerc, and that may well be it because we're struggling in the early stages of this Grand Prix. It's now through the middle sector once again. 
Charlotte's science fantasy trials is now, but we're all over the place to keep them behind. That's a bit dodgy on our part there, maybe a bit dirty. The FIA may be looking at that one. It's now into the first corner. We've run a little bit wide. We've run quite far wide, actually. And Carlos Sainz has seen a chance to get to the outside. But we're going to show him the door to go all the way round the outside and force him wide. And we just stay ahead of the Spaniard. It's now this is Yuki and Alonso for the lead of the Grand Prix. Slowly down the inside of Fernando Alonso as we've gone wheel to wheel. With Sainz as well, we keep it pinned round the outside of Sainz. Can Yuki get the lead in the Grand Prix? We stay ahead of Sainz. But what about Yuki and Alonso? As they go side by side through turn three. They're still side by side as they turn up towards turn four. And Yuki Tsunoda takes the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. On to lap 10, 10 now. Yuki leads his pull to gap and Fernando Alonso boxes. So are Aston Martin thinking of the two-stop then? Very interesting indeed. Those tyres are not going to do 24 laps, surely. I know he's a tyre whisperer, but he's not that good, Fernando Alonso, surely. As now, towards the end of lap 11, as we enter the final couple of corners, into the pits comes Carlos Sainz, so our Ferrari following Aston Martin, they're on a two-stop. He goes to Williams as well. And let's see, our Ferrari trying to force us into an undercut. It's not going to work though, because we are one-stopping. But can he come out in some clear air? Because he's side-by-side side with Liam Lawson. But that extra grip coming out of the first corner keeps the Ferrari ahead. And now we should have the pace to go through and he has as he's going wheel to wheel with Esteban Ocon now into the first corner but Ocon spun it round he's lit up the rear tyres he's done what we did on lap one but just further into the corner earlier into the corner and now he's left stranded in the middle of the track has he got an issue because he's not trying to move at all as everyone's trying to go round him now has he got an issue with that car he can't move it as now well, you can see us now going through, he's been disqualified. Esteban Ocon has been disqualified from the Hungarian Grand Prix for being sat in the middle of the track. He pulls off to the side and wasn't any issue. He just decided to have a little nap at Turn 1 and he has been disqualified then from the Hungarian Grand Prix. As now we box at the end of lap 15 for our one and only stop of the day then as we go on to fit the medium tyres hopefully no dramas at the pit stop like they were last time out at Silverstone but we come out of the pits and Carlos Sainz though is already out of turn one we have lost a lot of time doing our one stopper and going longer but extra grip those three laps of extra grip should hopefully catch us back up. This is Leclerc now coming out of the pits and he has been jumped by his teammate as well there. But as the two Ferraris go wheel to wheel, Leclerc all over the back of Carlos Sainz. Ferrari have to swap these two around. They're clearly on two totally different strategies. But Ferrari being Ferrari and messing their own race about surely. We need to get past Albon so we can get on the back of the battle in Ferraris and we send it laid up the inside of the chicane. Maybe a bit of dodgy with the track limits and Leclerc has finally got past his teammate. Whether that was team orders or racing, it had to happen a lap earlier than that because we are on the back of the Ferrari now uh, with our extra grip. We're going to go to the inside of Carlos Sainz. Those old mediums don't seem to be working for him on that Ferrari. He went forward, but now everyone else is boxed. He's very much going backwards as now we go into fourth place. This is Yuki going back at Fernando Alonso on his fresher tyres. And he's going to go round the outside at turn one. 
has he got the grip to get ahead Alonso can't find that one and the extra couple of laps of fresh grip seem to have a big effect here in the Hungarian Grand Prix as now he is two stopping into the pits comes Fernando Alonso he'd actually dropped all the way back into Leclerc as the Al Alpha Aston Martin is making the two stop as now this is Alex Albon pulling over to the side of the track on the pit straight and is out of the Grand Prix and also Carlos Sainz who we pulled away has boxed as well as we skip all around to that 31 because absolutely nothing was happening the gap between us and Leclerc was staying around 4-5 seconds but as we come on to the final lap we were hunting the Ferrari down we had more grip towards the end of the grip towards the end of the stint but the Ferrari was just keeping us out of the DRS but this is the first lap we've got anywhere near the Ferrari in terms of DRS the final lap can we make it another 1-2 for us into the chicane that may have been our last chance to get the Ferrari but into the final corner Yuki Tsunoda rounds it to make it another win for us and his second win of the season after Austria and for us one more lap maybe just maybe we could have got the Ferrari but we're too far back and Leclerc is going to come home for P2 and we're going to come home for P3 Nice work, mate. You did a really good job today. Pretty sure the boss is going to be happy with that one. It's victory in Budapest then, and what a victory it is after an incredible Grand Prix. So, Natalie, what made the difference out there today? Well, they are very much at one with the car, which is a cliche, but it's true. It's not an easy process, and that work is very much paying off. Here comes your top three, making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. So great work by Yuki there, great win for him, a tough battle with Fernando Alonso but ultimately that two stop not really working, Alonso still getting fourth sight so all the way down in ninth when he originally was fighting for the podium really. George has recovered then to finish P6 so we've still gained a lot of points on George in the championship we'll get onto that in just a second Sonoda has done what we need him to do when we're having a poor race we need him to be there to get the result and that's exactly what he's done and it's exactly what he did in his last win in Austria when we retired and it's now four on the bounce for us as a team it says Ocon DNF but we all know he got disqualified for some random reason I don't know what was going on there also Albon retiring as well in terms of the championship now we are five points clear of George Russell at the top Sonoda closes in on George as well and us the gap 24 points to Yuki as well very much heating up Yuki may have an outside chance in terms of the championship but we'll see by the time we get to Las Vegas whether he has a chance still three teams yet to score in AlphaTauri, Haas and Williams we now extend our lead at the top of the championship over Mercedes is very much becoming a two horse race now for the constructors I think we can say between us 
and Mercedes. But that's been your Hungarian Grand Prix. They're not the most exciting Hungarian Grand Prix there's been, but there were still battles at the front. Ultimately, a very costly mistake for us on the opening lap. I don't think we would have had the pace to keep them behind anyway. Yuki gets another win. The two-stopper, just not the way to go today, but it was interesting to see the battle between the one and the two-stop. And yeah, we go to Spa next for the Belgian Grand Prix and our second sprint race of the season. I'll see you then. Goodbye.